So the Georgia Climate Project is something that's about four years old, and it's really a group of universities and colleges across Georgia that have come together and said, we want to be part of the climate solution. We want to help Georgians understand what the impacts are. We want to help folks understand what the solutions are. Georgia can lead on climate, and this is one of the ways that we can connect experts to stakeholders and really begin a conversation about where Georgia could be as a leader on climate. Yes, yeah, so people think about climate change as something that's far off in space and far off in time, impacting somebody else somewhere. Maybe it's impacting me in my lifetime, maybe my grandkids, but it's really not considered a here or now issue. And it really is a here or now issue for Georgia. We are vulnerable to any number of different climate impacts. Of course, we have a economy that is largely agriculturally based. So when we think about extremes in water, whether it's flooding or drought, when we think about rising temperatures impacting crops, we're talking about people's livelihoods here and the biggest piece of our economic puzzle here in Georgia. When we think about the coast, we talk about the Port of Savannah, uh, all of the supply chain issues that come with thinking about its resilience, not just tomorrow and the next week in terms of entering hurricane season all too soon now, by the way, but also in terms of the longer term decade to decade resilience of all of that logistics and the economy around our thriving coastal communities as well. Here, of course, in Atlanta, we're talking about extreme heat uh, becoming much more of a concern going forward. Uh, right now, we have about um, 90 days or so of extreme heat per year where we're tipping into triple digit heat indices, those most dangerous levels. That's going to triple to 2050 under current trends of warming. And so we're talking about this impacting our economy, impacting people's lives and livelihoods now already and for decades to come. So this is an opportunity where we can actually use the science to generate solutions and think about how we can build a resilient economy, uh, be part of a low carbon economy, but also think about how we can help farmers over these next couple tough decades where we know additional warming is coming down the pike. So this is about really preparing today for tomorrow and leveraging science uh, along the way. Yeah, so the science is pretty clear. We have to reduce emissions, uh, greenhouse gas emissions, 50% by 2030, and then get to carbon neutral, zero emissions by 2050. How can we play a role in that when we're only one small person in a, in a sea of humans that are causing this problem? A couple different ways. I've personally chosen to live a low carbon lifestyle and dedicate myself to doing that next step, that next step for the rest of my life. So thinking about biking to work, but also thinking about using mass transit, supporting mass transit at the ballot box, thinking about ways that we could reduce our reliance on beef and uh, animal proteins where possible in our diets, uh, thinking about the education of our children, how we talk about this amongst our family and friends is one of the most overlooked pieces of solutions that we can do as individuals. Uh, a vast majority, 70% or so of Georgians, care about climate change and support any number of climate solutions. So sometimes just having a conversation with a friend or a family member, uh, you're actually in great company here in Georgia. We, we want to be engaged in solutions here in Georgia. We understand it's a problem. And so actually sharing what we're doing, what we care about with climate change is part of the solution because we just don't talk about the subject enough. And so that's something that I hope we can do, not just on Earth Day or Earth Week, but across the year as well. Something I'm learning from my students in a class this semester is called the Carbon Reduction Challenge, where they as individual students team up with organizational partners to move some very big levers. So I want to make that clear as well. All of us have workplaces, we're part of schools, with our kids' schools, we may go to churches or synagogues, and these are where hundreds to thousands of people come together and make decisions about energy. So thinking about what we could do as part of that collective is also part of the climate solution.